It is 2025, and the moon is no longer just a distant glowing rock in the night sky. It is becoming the hottest real estate in the solar system. Not for vacation homes or lunar golf courses just yet, but for an exciting mix of national pride, cutting-edge science, and private sector hustle that's rewriting the space exploration playbook. And guess who is joining the party? India and Japan. And uh, even the US might actually do something there again. And there is a host of uh, private companies, each with their own ambitious plans to touch down on our celestial neighbor and maybe even set a foot there. Today, on Knowing is Winning, I will talk about the upcoming moon landings and ambitious space exploration in the near future. Well, let's start with India, because 2025 has officially been dubbed Gaganyan Year by the ISRO's chairman, Dr. V. Narayanan. That's right, the Indian Space Research Organization isn't just sending rockets up anymore. They are gearing up to send humans. But before the uh, astronauts suit up, there is uh, Vyomitra, a humanoid robot, ready to hitch a ride on the first uncrewed Gaganyan mission planned for December 2025. Think of uh, Vyomitra as the ultimate space test dummy, except instead of getting uh, smashed by a, a crash test, it is going to help ISRO iron out the kinks before the India's first crewed flight, now expected in early 2027. It is a big deal. India is aiming to become the fourth nation to independently send humans to space, right after the US, Russia, and China. And they're doing it with distinctly made in India rocket, which adds a nice patriotic flair to the whole endeavor. But India's ambitions don't stop there. The Chandrayaan-5 mission is on the docket. And this time, it's not just about orbiting the moon or dropping off um, a lander. No, this mission will feature a 250-kilogram rover, hefty compared to the 25-kilogram rover of uh, Chandrayaan-3, uh, that will explore the lunar surface in detail. And here is the kicker. This rover, the lander, and the entire rocket will be indigenous showing India's growing prowess in space tech. Plus, Chandrayaan-5 is a collaborative effort with Japan, signaling a new era of international cooperation outside of the usual US-Russia-China space triangle. Now, speaking of Japan, they are not just uh, content to cheer from the sidelines. After a hiccup uh, with their uh, last lunar landing attempt, Japan's M2 resilience mission is gearing up for the comeback in mid-2025. This mission will deploy the resilience lander and a tiny but tenacious micro-rover named, well, tenacious. This little rover has a big job, extracting water from lunar soil and splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen. Why? Well, because water on the moon just isn't for a cosmic drink. It is the key to sustaining future lunar bases and producing rocket fuel for journeys beyond. Japan is actually pushing the envelope on turning the moon into a stepping stone for deeper um, and farther space exploration. Meanwhile, over in the US, private companies are shaking things up. Firefly Aerospace Blue Ghost Lunar Lander made headlines by successfully landing on the moon's Mercrisium plane early in 2025. And this was no small feat. Firefly became the first private company to land a spacecraft on the moon without crashing or toppling over, joining an exclusive club that includes only a handful of countries. Blue Ghost carries a mix of NASA-sponsored experiments and commercial payloads, testing everything from uh, satellite navigation to radiation-resistant computers, which will be crucial for future lunar habitats. It's like the moon's first tech incubator, paving the way for a new generation of uh, space startups. Not to be outdone, 
um, company called um, Intuitive Machines, um, uh, the company that already made history of its IM-1 lunar landing in 2024, launched its IM-2 mission in early 2025. This mission targets the lunar South Pole, a region of intense interest because of its potential water ice deposits. IM-2 carries rovers and hoppers from US, Japanese and Finnish partners, all working together to explore and understand this icy frontier. The uh, collaboration here is uh, remarkable. Space exploration is becoming less about national rivalry and more about pooling resources and expertise to unlock the moon's secrets. Amid all this um, lunar excitement, India is also pushing the envelope with its first space docking experiment. In late 2024, ISRO launched two small satellites to practice autonomous docking, a technology essentially for future lunar missions like uh, Chandrayaan-4 and for building India's own space station, the Bharatiya Antirksh Station. If successful, India will join the elite club of nations that have mastered this complex maneuver. Imagine the uh, precision needed two spacecraft gently meeting in an orbit like a cosmic handshake without bumping heads or drifting apart. It is a critical skill for assembling space stations or conducting um, lunar sample uh, return missions. And while all these national and private missions are making headlines, there is a quieter revolution happening in space infrastructure. NASA's um, Artemis program is gearing up for uh, Artemis II, the first crewed mission to orbit the moon since Apollo, scheduled for 2026. This mission will test the Orion spacecraft and the space launch system, setting the stage for future lunar landings and um, even Mars missions. But what's fascinating is how NASA is increasingly working with commercial partners for its commercial lunar payload services system outsourcing lunar deliveries to companies like Firefly and um, Intuitive Machines. It is a shift from government-only missions to more collaborative, uh, mixed uh, economy in space. The moon, once a barren, unreachable place, is now a bustling hub of robotic activity, international partnerships and private sector innovation. It is like the Wild West of the uh, cosmos, but with fewer cowboys and more engineers in uh, clean rooms. Um, the, the race, though, isn't just about uh, planting flags anymore. It's about science, sustainability, and laying the groundwork for humanity's next giant leap. So, what does this mean for us, Earthlings, watching from below? For one, it's a reminder that space exploration is no longer the exclusive domain of so-called superpowers. Countries like India and Japan are proving they can play in the big leagues, while private companies are showing that innovation and entrepreneurship can thrive beyond our atmosphere. This diversity accelerates progress and opens new possibilities for scientific discovery and commercial ventures. And here is a fun thought. With all these rovers, landers, and hoppers hopping around on the lunar surface, the moon might soon have its own version of a traffic jam, just without the honking and uh, road rage. Imagine a, a lunar GPS system guiding tiny rovers around craters and boulders, avoiding collisions while searching for water ice um, or studying the moon's uh, geology. Uh, it's a cosmic dance of machines choreographed by humans on Earth. Well, in the next few years, as these missions unfold, we'll see not only stunning images and groundbreaking data, but also new technologies that could trickle down to everyday life. Radiation resistant materials, autonomous docking, and in situ resources utilization, like uh, turning lunar soil into water and fuel, could inspire innovations in medicine, robotics, and sustainable living here on Earth. So, buckle up. The moon is no longer just a pretty face in the night sky. 
It's becoming a dynamic laboratory, a proving ground, and perhaps the first step toward a future where humanity lives and works beyond our home planet. And in this grand cosmic adventure, India's Gaganyan program, Japan's resilient rovers, and the private sector's lunar pioneers are all playing starring roles, proving that when it comes to space, knowing is truly winning. Thank you very much for watching.